Pascal Tracks. Uh, so my name is Ryan. I'm uh, based off of Malaysia. So it's absolutely um, good to be back here uh, in Singapore as well as Fourth Asia. So my last um, Fourth Asia session was in Bangkok um, like three, four years ago. So it's good to see uh, um, some familiar faces. Okay, so um, I'm just going to talk about uh, prediction, but um, just a quick, uh, you know, um, a uh, quick overview of uh, MySQL. You probably have seen this in the keynote in my colleague's uh, presentation. Uh, MySQL has been um, around for 27 years now. Uh, it's a very solid uh, transactional uh, database. And because of all this user, uh, MySQL has gotten, I mean, it's, it's been, um, you know, really rock solid and stable. And from the MySQL team, uh, we have just added, um, you know, a, a great innovation into MySQL. Uh, cloud native, uh, built for the cloud, uh, heat wave database engine. Um, so this is what I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, you know, the cloud-based uh, MySQL heat wave engine. And not forgetting, you know, lots of uh, an open source application uh, supporting MySQL uh, that make it uh, really, really um, um, popular. Okay, so MySQL heat wave. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's one of the greatest uh, innovation from the Oracle Research Lab um, that we have um, added a special plugin to the InnoDB engine. Um, bear in mind that this is a uh, cloud-only uh, database, managed database in the Oracle Cloud, as well as uh, in AWS. And if you're running um, Azure, you can also take advantage of HeatWave using the, the fast speed interconnect from Azure to Oracle Cloud. So essentially, uh, HeatWave is a special plugin to the InnoDB uh, engine. As you know, um, InnoDB is very, very good in transactional uh, workload. It's really, really stable. Uh, customers have been telling us that uh, you know, the replication is rock solid. Without uh, replication, you can't really do uh, you know, massive hyperscale application. And, and for that, um, there are certain things we still want to improve, um, especially on the OLAP workload, which traditionally doesn't really work really well in uh, InnoDB because of uh, you know, the uh, role-based you know, RDB and MES design. So what we have done is um, we have uh, it, uh, designed this InnoDB engine, uh, the HeatWave engine, to be able to help you to automatically convert the role-based into hybrid uh, columnar format, and then uh, making use of the uh, you know, elasticity, elasticity of the cloud to hide the scale um, the uh, database engine for you. So this is uh, introduced in uh, Oracle Cloud in 2020. Um, today we can scale up to 64 uh, nodes, which means uh, you can create a heat wave clusters with uh, 64 nodes in the cloud. And it's capable of uh, you know building a uh, um, uh, data warehouse of 60 terabyte. So you can move um, 60 terabyte of your data into the cloud. So essentially, um, so when you have your transactional data, product, sales information, uh, sits in the InnoDB, uh, you can push this data automatically to the HeatWave uh, cluster. And data will be split and sharded, uh, distributed into the HeatWave cluster. Okay, so uh, in the column format, and when you run your analytic query, it will be automatically pushed down to the heat rate clusters. And the data is stored in the memory. So you get uh, distributed uh, processing as well as in-memory processing uh, to give you the power. Okay, so you can take advantage of the uh, multiple node in, in the cloud. And one of the reasons why we choose um, you know, to do this in the cloud is because uh, you can you know, scale up and down uh, you know, the resources as opposed to if you run this in the on-premise, you know, you would need to, you know, procure and buy a server as opposed to, you know, doing it in a cloud. So that gives us a lot of flexibility uh, in, um, you know, adding new features and functions into the heat wave uh, cluster. Okay, so um, for the interest of today, uh, topics, I will talk about uh, machine learning. Um, yeah, so machine learning is not something new, right? So Every day we've been using, you know, the, uh, the apps, uh, Facebook, uh, Grab, or uh, Uber, 
right? So you can see that uh, you know all these apps um, really make our life easy. Right? For example, you know, go to Facebook, you see you know your, the news feed from your favorite friends, uh, things that are important to you, you know, pops up in your news feed, and that's all because of uh, you know the machine learning model, right? Um, in the Macari talk yesterday, they talk about how they use the machine learning to do uh, learn to ranking is to move those um, uh, content that's matter to the user to the top. So that's essentially what uh, people are doing today, right? Using machine learning to um, to help um, um, build an intelligent system. Booking.com, right? So uh, in recommendation system, um, so that people can quickly book a package. You know, on uh, Booking.com, so they want to turn clicks into sales by having this uh, you know recommendation system. Also, Uber Eats um, to be able to send you notification the right one at the right time um, at, at the right user to the right user. So all these are done uh, using machine learning. And if you are in a different industry, um, there are many different uh, cases: uh, banking, the fraud, uh, retail. Uh, telco um, and and other industry. I'm just gonna fly by this. So just uh, last week, you know, coming to here, I received this uh, SMS. I'm sure you receive all this uh, SMS uh, as well, right? So well, this is obviously a spam, right? So it uh, can you see? So it's to say thank you for your payment for Tommy for uh, you know this uh, two thousand ringgit. And very quickly, by looking at this, you know this is a spam, right? Because uh, it is a personal mobile number, right? And um, the language is not, uh, you know, properly structured, and the content number is really not really a uh, um, the content, uh, the bank official content number. So this can be a good use case for telco. So every day, you know, we see all this, and machine learning uh, is going to help us. But it's not that easy to implement machine learning because. Um, um, it takes a highly skilled person to do it, right? Data scientists, you need a person that's really good with Python, uh, really good with uh, uh, machine learning algorithms, uh, be able to you know, um, get the right data, uh, structure the data in a way that are good for uh, learning. So these are the four uh, machine learning uh, pipelines that is common to all the uh, machine learning uh, uh, tasks and, and in order to to, great, uh, to get a, a tune model, you really need to do an iterative um, you know, um, way to get the, the, the model right. And, and that's not very um, productive, especially you know, uh, if you have many, you have uh, lots of data, and you, have, you need to come up with the model in, in good time. So um, that's, OK, I have a quick demo here. So this is to show you um, how a typical machine learning uh, process look like. So you're going to have a, a, a data in, in, the, in the data frames, and then you would uh, build a model, right? And in here, you need to choose a model, right? Uh, the right uh, algorithm uh, for the data set so that uh, it makes sense uh, to solve, uh, to come up with the uh, model that you, you like. So I'll just uh, go through it. And you see that uh, in, in the model, there are lots of uh, parameters you need to tune in order to you know, um, generate an accurate model. So that, that's uh, typically how you would approach a um, um, machine learning with uh, a traditional uh, machine learning uh, pipelines. So in HeatWave, um, we are automating this um, tedious machine learning task into AutoML. So this is an Oracle uh, Research Lab technology. So it, um, instead of you doing all this uh, task, um, you, you, we automate it into the AutoML uh, engine. And with that, um, we don't really need to have um, you know, very high uh, Python skill but uh, leverage on the SQL uh, um, uh, knowledge you have. So you can um, um, use SQL to invoke AutoML to create a model. So these are the four things that uh, we uh, innovate and put into the AutoML. 
Number one is that, uh, you know, in the, the pre-processing, we'll make sure that data set is uh, complete. Um, and the second step, you know, is to be able to sample the data into a good size for um, uh, training. Um, the goal is really to come up with an accurate model in a short uh, amount of time. And the third one is uh, we, we have a proxy model that we can start with. Instead of iterative, you know, um, getting this uh, model, we actually have, uh, you know, a, a, a proxy model to start with and fine tune along the way to get to the, uh, 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 the tune model. So with that, uh, we have the uh, um, engine uh, within the HeatWave uh, database to allow you to um, uh, do machine, uh, machine learning. So these are the um, three algorithms or three different type of uh, categories that we support right now. Uh, classification, regression, and forecasting. Um, soon to be uh, available is the anomaly, uh, anomaly uh, detection, which is going to be available very soon. So you can uh, tackle different uh, uh, problems using all these uh, uh, algorithms. And yeah, so if you uh, work with scikit-learn, these are the algorithms that we support. And if you run AutoML, um, the, the engine will pick, um, depending on the categories, which algorithm will give you the most accurate in the shortest amount of time. So putting this together, uh, doing machine learning in um, um, the heat wave, um, it is really you know having a set of data loaded in the heat wave engine, and essentially uh, four SQL calls to um, to 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 um, implement uh, machine learning in heat wave. So you can see that um, and there's a ML train, uh, there's a scoring for you to test the uh, accuracy of the model. And then loading the data into the heat wave cluster, uh, loading the model in the heat wave uh, engine. And then depending on whether you want to do it in a batch way or you know, in a real time uh, prediction, there are two different uh, functions that you can use. Essentially, these are uh, store procedures that you will invoke on the heat wave. To be more uh, detail specific, uh, these are some of the you know, command that you can use. Right? Um, I'm not gonna go through each one of this. But uh, if you're familiar with SQL, this is just uh, fitting the value into the parameters. Uh, predict table, explain row. I'm going to talk about explain a little bit so that uh, you know um, um, the uh, explain function is very important uh, in the uh, machine learning model. Okay, so I just want to uh, run through a few um, illustrations uh, to show you um, what happened in the back end. So when you have a data loaded into the InnoDB engine, uh, when you execute the ML train, the data will be loaded into the heat wave uh, node in a cluster. And, and then the training would happen in the heat wave node. And once the, uh, you know, the model is trained, it will then uh, store into the uh, model catalog. Um, and and then, then you can start using the model to uh, predict uh, by feeding it uh, a new data set. Okay, so yeah, so when you run um, a predict table, uh, you will get the uh, model from the model catalog, uh, load it into the heat wave node, um, and, and then they'll get the result back to uh, your application. Okay, same goes for the explanation. Um, Again, the, the model will be loaded and you know, it, it will explain um, why a prediction is made in a certain way so that it tells you the, the, what are the significant features that is used to making that the prediction. Okay, so yeah, so because uh, this SQL base, you can actually reuse or you can use any of the uh, notebook, Jupyter, uh, Zeppelin or any SQL uh, tools uh, to work with uh, heat wave machine learning. Okay, so I have a application developed here to show you how you can use this. Um, so there's a banking uh, marketing data, which the um, 
a model is trained to predict which other customers is likely to subscribe to uh, a new product, right? So that, that gives um, the, um, the call center a good list of uh, potential customers going to sign up because, uh, you know, they can turn uh, the potential into uh, a, 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 um, a customer so that, um, you know, you, you get the maximum return out of the uh, uh, call center. So the model has been trained. Um, and all I need to do is just to load the model into the cluster. And then I could show you uh, the exclamation um, capability in heat wave. Right? So when you do a show model exclamation, it tells you, okay, for this particular uh, customers, why does it become, why does it sign, uh, sign up the product? It's because the, the core duration um, you know, with this uh, customers. And you can see that, uh, oops, let me just backtrack a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so there's other parameters such as um, um, the uh, bang rate, uh, the URI ball uh, rate, um, and also the uh, number of years this person is employed. Uh, it's important uh, making this prediction that, uh, you know, this customer is going to sign up with the product. So with uh, this information, you know, the call center can um, pick and choose, you know, the, the, the customers that uh, will get uh, uh, likely to subscribe with the product. Okay. Um, just roll forward a bit. And in terms of scoring, you can score, uh, you can check the uh, accuracy of the model. And there are many different uh, type of uh, metrics you can uh, use to check the model. And here you can, uh, you know, uh, run this prediction in Bash. Uh, for example, I'm creating a random table, and I run the, uh, uh, the model on this table, and that will give me a prediction to whether, you know, which customer is going to sign up uh, with the, uh, the product. Okay, so let me just go to uh, the next. Okay, so putting this all together uh, using um, you know, the actual um, uh, SQL, um, you have a idea of uh, you know how easy it is to 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 use this in HeatWave. So I'm just connecting to the HeatWave clusters, and this is the same uh, data set that I show you. So connected, and these are all the model in the model catalog. Yep, and uh, yeah. So I'm just gonna load the the bank marketing model. So it's loaded, um, and this is the you know the prediction on the table. Yeah. So you just specify that uh, you know the test data set, the model which is loaded in the heat wave clusters and uh, the table that um, the store the result. So that's how easy it is you know, to use the model uh, with uh, SQL. Okay, so we also did a, a benchmark against uh, others. You can see that uh, because uh, you know, the uh, in-memory clusters and also the uh, auto ML technology, um, you know, we, we are way faster than the Redshift uh, ML. And internal cost, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, just 1% of the cost of uh, using on, uh, on Redshift ML. So with that, um, very quickly, it'll give you a quick, quick overview of what you can do uh, with HeatWave. Besides, uh, you know, it's a very fast uh, OLAP engine, but also you can, uh, you know, run machine learning on uh, HeatWave. And if you want to try out, uh, because this is um, um, on the cloud, you can actually sign up uh, on Oracle Cloud uh, with a trial account. You get uh, 300 US dollars or $500 sync um, um, in 30 days, or whichever come uh, uh, first. 
to try out the heat wave and machine learning. So with that, uh, thanks for your time, and I'm here to ask questions if you uh, to 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 answer questions if you have any. I see, a, I see a bunch of questions. So, uh, I'll go here first. Hi, uh, cool technologies. So, how much influence do I have on the architecture of the model itself? If I say, okay, I want this many layers, I want to skip layers, this many layers, and so on. Um, do we have any, any more influence than just saying, okay, I want a classifier? Um, so the question is, how many different type of uh, algorithms or? Ah, so today we support uh, uh, classification regression and forecasting and um, anomaly detection is coming so yeah the list of uh, the algorithm yeah, it, it's uh, pretty much the yeah those the three that we have uh, currently and we're talking about model training but then how about model serving so I see that this is very, like a very notebook driven um, environment which is great and all for prototyping but then for actually putting this model into production, how does that work? Uh, okay, so uh, it's all SQL uh, driven. So once you have the model, uh, it stores in the model catalog. So in order to consume the model, uh, you need to load the model into the heat wave clusters. And in terms of the application, it's just a simple SQL to, to invoke um, the model to, to, to do prediction. So either you could do um, you know, a batch kind of um, predict on the table, like a do a role based kind of uh, uh, prediction. So it's all through the uh, uh, SQL. Yeah. So in your application, PHP or Node.js, you know, use a MySQL connector, connect to the heat wave clusters, load the model, and then run the uh, thought procedures uh, for prediction. Yes. Uh, sorry, I have an architecture question yeah. regarding uh, how this works. Uh, so, um, uh, is are you actually um, doing the querying and the model training separately? Or are you actually able to do uh, some form of distributed uh, training uh, on, like you know, a cluster of uh, on a, a, a uh, having like you know one of those uh, cluster systems, basically? Right. So, um, so HeatWave is a cluster system. So when you run the ML train, so it's actually you know distribute uh, distributed into cluster node and then do training because data is distributed. So you do uh, distributed uh, training. So, so it's, it's all done by heat wave. It's all done by the heat wave automatically. Okay. So, yeah. right. um, time for one last question. So will this be published to open source or how much of it already is? <laughs> Good question. This is a uh, not open source, yeah. This is uh, yeah, only in the cloud. So that's why you know um, um, you, you can try out the uh, the heat wave with a trial account. All right. Well, thank you very much right. for this wonderful talk and answering all these great questions. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.